Hello everyone, how are you doing today? You are all welcome to my channel, Apostle Paul Taiwo YouTube channel. To my recent subscribers I want to say a very big thank you, and to those that have been here all along, God bless you. And if this is your first time on this channel, I want to say a very big welcome and thank you for tuning into my video today. Kindly endeavor to click the subscription button and also the notification icon so that you can be notified whenever I dropped a new video or come up for prayers. Have you heard of our church building project? We will like to use this opportunity to ask for your financial support for the ministry. We are raising a building for the church ministry and this involve lots of fund. In case God has put it in your heart to support the ministry church building project, kindly reach out to us on our contact details which is on the video description, and you can also send directly to the account details on the screen. We will be glad and grateful to receive your financial support for the work of God. For God loves a cheerful giver, thank you. This video you are about to listen to I believe will bless your heart, and help you to come into repentance, and also strengthen your bond with God and with His Holy Spirit in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. Endeavor to like this video, share it to all your friends, contacts and loved ones, God bless you. I will begin to relate my testimony. I've always been a diligent worker at the church where I've congregated. My pastor always praised my work. In the small church of the neighborhood, where all people are serious and live the word, I learned a lot from them. This little church was the foundation of my ministry. I was prepared as a valued worker in this place where I became a reverend myself. I learned to walk in the word and discipline my body to keep the commandments of Jesus. Reverend Brian was pleased with my services and anointed me as reverend. If the reverend put me in the church direction, it's because he trusts me. And in my work, I have never disappointed my pastor. I made the name of that church be spoken in that city, through my testimony of life that I live, causing us to be trusted by the people who were visiting us. I taught the people and welcomed visitors. People in need, destitute, problematic, and the humble had loving reception. We value each soul, we lift their spirits. We revive their faith and make them feel good and thus gain their souls. We do not waste souls and all who visit us are well attended. We give support and confidence that we are trustworthy people. The souls are calm and do not feel worried about their problems. These people are not alone, we adopt them as part of our family. I have striven to create a system where members of my ministry work with love and take good care of new converts. The people have been attracted to my church. This ministry has won many souls for the attitude of treatment, loving reception, and home visitation. The devil has his strategies of winning souls, we also have ours. We make loving visits to the homes. The gospel here where I pastor works in practice. We have invaded the territories of the enemy and gathered souls for salvation. At a time where churches are tainted with scandals and corruption, my ministry has made a difference in the city. People do not want to congregate in scandal-tainted churches. Evangelize, be agents that produce the work of God. Before you win souls, win your soul first. If you do not know how to take care of your spiritual life, how will you care for the lives of souls? The Holy Spirit wants the full fruits and yet expects the multiplication of its fruits. I look at each face of a visitor and I see expressions of sadness, discouragement, anguish, and disappointment. Just by looking into their eyes, I can see that they need Jesus. Their voids reflect in their eyes. Man does not live without God. We have to receive a soul with love in the house of God and show that we are different. I learned that we have to give shelter, security, and comfort to souls. Spread kindness to those around you. Do not hurt people do not offend them, love them. Even if they do not talk to you and do not like your personality, learn to love them. If you do not know how to love, then you do not know Jesus, for he is love and life. The man who has not yet met Jesus is not ready to die. He did not discover the essence of love and life that is called Jesus Christ. I went to my house and called my wife and two children to pray to God in preparation for my pastoral walk. At dawn, when my wife and my two children went to sleep, an angel appeared to me and said, Jesus is pleased with you. He wants to reveal the hidden mysteries, I came to get you. When I heard the angel I became paralyzed and I fell on my face to the ground. He said, 
you will worship only the true and living God. The radiance coming out of the angel's body seemed fragments of the sun. I stood before that glorious being and my body remained on the floor unconscious. The angel held my hands and in a matter of seconds, we climbed at the speed of light. I was standing in front of the celestial gate that is narrow. I beheld a line of Christians with more than 50 men and women who had died at that moment. Christians, when they die, do not go straight to hell like the wicked. They need to know if they had walked according to the teaching of the scriptures. The angel who guarded the gate of heaven looked on if those names were written in the book of life. And to my surprise, five Christians entered heaven singing praises and forty-five were cast into the darkness below. I was terrified and the angel who was with me perceived my concern. He made me approach the gate. He opened the book of life and said, His name is here, do not fear. I was happy and looked at my name but did not understand those letters that are very different from the letters of the earth. They looked like little symbols. The angel of the gate said, Here in heaven you have another name. Here God gives a new name to those who are born again. The old man had the old name, already the new name is for the new creature. Nothing of the earth nor earthly names will enter heaven. The Father, Maker of all things changes the names of the children, registering with their true names. The names of the earth signify carnal names, but the spiritual names are those of the spiritually born. The angel said, These new names that you see in this book mean that they do not belong to the world, they are pilgrims in the land where their homeland is the heavenly land. I asked the angel, What is my heavenly name? The angel said, I do not know your name, I was not allowed to decipher. And even if I knew it, it cannot be revealed, you have not died yet, you're only invited here in heaven. You will know about your new name when you are living in heaven. For now, we will call you by your earthly name. The angel of the door showed me the birth registration book. In this book, I am 23 years old, but my age on earth is 43 years. I asked the angel what that means. He answered, the counting in heaven is different from the counting on the earth. You were converted and baptized in the waters at the age of 20. You renounced the world and did not practice sin. From your new birth, your new age was counted. The 20 years that you lived in the world were not counted because you lived in sin and God has blotted out your iniquity. The angel of the gate authorized my entrance. And the angel that was with me took me to the master. When I saw Jesus, my heart quickened and I was moved. His look of love consumed my being. I had no words to say. Jesus smiled and said, The death of the saint is eternal life, behold, I will put a new ministry in your hands and take you to places in the world that you do not know. Jesus said, Take my servant to know the kingdom. I saw many different animals. Birds that glitter when they fly through the air. I saw trees full of fruit, their leaves glistening. The fruits also shine everything is beautiful. I saw several fruits of various sizes. The angel took me near a giant oil tank that shines like gold. The angel said, this is the anointing oil that is poured out on the heads of the saints to proclaim the gospel. The messenger angels filled the gold tubes with the anointings and descended the earth to anoint the saints. The angel who was with me said, they are pits of anointing, those who pray and sanctify themselves receive a portion of that anointing. The number of Christians who really want to be seriously committed to God's work has diminished. And the angels stopped coming down with the anointings. There are few who live the true gospel. These have received a heavenly anointing for their spiritual capacities. Any Christian who does not receive a portion of this anointing will never be able to win spiritual warfare and will not endure trials. I looked at the anointing oil tank and warmth exuded from it, surrounding my body. I felt a deep joy and bliss standing next to it. That tank is a reservoir that will end when grace is taken from the earth. The church will no longer need the anointing, for she will be next to Jesus. I saw a great river that cuts the city of the saints and millions of inhabitants have lived in it since ancient times. I saw a variety of fishes of various bright colors in the crystal clear river. The city is divided into parts, each piece of land has a house. The city is unique and gigantic with thousands of angels. Crowds of inhabitants are there together with the angels. I saw lots of gold, houses with the structures of buildings made with the purest gold. 
The floor is full of precious stones with varieties of colors. Each beautiful stone is of various geometric shapes. Everything is so splendorous and beautiful. The plants and trees that are there have eternal life, nothing dies in that place. There are flowers of various colors with great intensity. The flowers sang and the whole nature praises. A variety of plants with gleaming greens and flowers shine like the stars. I saw a large park full of flowers, where the people gathered to talk. There is no pollution, there is no degradation of nature. I saw a house full of gems inside. I saw the treasures in gold boxes and the name of each saint was on top of the boxes. Each box belongs to a Christian. There the thief cannot steal the treasure that is stored for every saint. The angel said, these are the reward for the saved who strive. For those who are saved and do not strive will live here, but will have no rewards for their efforts. The king is righteous and will give rewards according to what his servants work in the land. The man who works on earth for souls has the right to receive rewards. I saw the manna in the heavens and the memorial book of God, where all the saints do for the love of the work is recorded. I have noted in the book, all that the apostle Paul did to the church when he was on earth. Even the churches he founded remained in the memorial of God. Some Christians who had already departed received their rewards through this book. Other Christians who are still alive and continue to do the work are all being noted in this book. Those who help the church grow and feed the orphans, the beggars, the elderly, and abandoned children. Who helps widows and out-of-town Christians who come from afar as missionaries receive awards. Those who leave their family to do the missions in far places also receive rewards. Those who help one of these little ones who have nowhere to stay will also be rewarded. Their works are in the book of the memorial of God. Several praise instruments are sent from this place to earth. I have never seen them on earth, but they resemble harp hymns. Most of the instruments in heaven are of woodwind, I saw lyres and harps of gold. This is the heavenly country, the kingdom of the saints ruled by the king, who gained all the authority of his father when he opened his arms on the cross of Calvary. Jesus is the king of that kingdom that walks among his people. I saw a variety of empty diamond houses that have not been inaugurated, other than the ones I saw with the locals inside. These empty houses await the righteous who still live on earth. I saw angels, archangels, they are strong and war leaders. The angel sent me back and I woke up in a hospital bed. My wife was by my side. She said she called me, but I did not wake up. She was lying on the floor of the house and she called for medical help to take me. I told her about my experience. She thought I hit my head and I was crazy. She went home and left me in the hospital. She said I would get better. At night a demon appeared to me and touched my spine. He hated me and disappeared. At dawn, I was discharged by the doctor from the hospital but I could not get out of bed. I did not feel my legs. My doctor checked what was happening. And the tests were done and I discovered that I was paralyzed. That was a shock to me. I thought of my wife, my children, my job, and the church that I serve in. I remembered when the demon appeared in my room and touched my spine. It seemed like a dream but soon I saw that it was real. Jesus allowed Satan to touch my health which would affect my marital life and cause me to lose my job. When my wife learned that I had lost my job because I was not in the best condition, she abandoned me. I was alone at home with no one to take care of me. My pastor came to visit me and was very sorry to see that I was paralyzed in the wheelchair. He is the reverend founder who anointed me to be the reverend of one of his churches. I told him about my experience. I told him to put another reverend in my place. The reverend said, I believe in your experience, I am very sorry to lose a pastor like you. You are free to open your church. I said, how I am going to direct the work, I cannot feed the sheep of my ministry in this situation. He replied, I will put another worker in your place definitively since you do not want a shepherd anymore. But I believe God will lift you from this wheelchair. You are a great leader. I will be willing to help you until you walk. The reverend went back home. I felt disgusted and a permanent fear plagued me every day. My sorrows were constant for not being able to walk. 
Sometimes there were distressing doubts that my paralysis was incurable even though Jesus said he would send me to places I never went to when I was in heaven. I know my wife was wrong to abandon me, she depended on me to survive. She did not want to take care of me and went back to her parents' house and took the children. She made a mistake with that decision. Misleading decisions make people act on impulse, without thinking about the future consequences of their actions. I do not complain about the wife that God gave me. The choices one does in times of anxiety can only be judged by God. It is my duty at that moment to walk together with God, just as Abraham walked. At this difficult time without faith, I cannot please God. Weak faith produces weak results. I thought to myself, my condition is not defeated. Everything I'm going through is a temporary test and will end. Jesus said that I will preach in unknown places. I cannot think of my problems now, it will sicken my mind and cause harm to myself. The Lord Jesus will give me victory at the right time, he is not late. It is not my time that will make me the winner, everything is in his time. My pastor came to visit me several times, he gave me the morale boost to my faith. He would take me to the bathroom to do the necessities and help in the shower. His wife made my food and cleaned the house. People of God, never forget the brothers who helped you to overcome the bad times, be grateful for the help you have received. The Reverend was a person who, to this day, I am grateful to him even though he is no longer my pastor. He could not help me when my interior was suffering and my heart was crying inside. At that moment, only God can console me. In the hour of the inner battle that takes place within each one of us, do not be deceived, for dear ones cannot be with you forever, only Jesus. While my pastor and his wife helped me, the church he put in my hands also abandoned me. Never put your trust in church people. You'll be disappointed, men are flawed. Jesus tested me in the fire until the last day that my pastor took me in his arms and put me to bed to sleep. An angel appeared in my room and touched my spine. He said, you have been approved by God. The next day, I was able to get up to do the work of God. After my wife left, I was free to do the work in unfamiliar places. My wife was ashamed to believe that I would not walk anymore. She did not want to go back to me thinking that I would not forgive her. I forgave her and said to her not to be ashamed of what she did, everyone deserves a second chance. I inaugurated the new ministry. Jesus did not allow me to go back to pastoring one of the reverend's churches. Jesus told me to say these words to all the churches of today. He said, my faithful servants defend the banner of the gospel and receive no applause. They expect only the scourges for defending the truth and fighting deceit. They pay injustice with righteousness and evil for good to all who confront my truth. My servants do not justify their errors and accept my correction. They confess their sins and change their conduct. They never think that they have done everything in the work and that they have reached their maximum. They do not think they need not do anything else to please me. They know that the world is not one and they need these souls for my kingdom. They do not stop working for me and always try to learn from my word to improve their lives. Jesus said, the end is near and my word has to reach every home and assist every soul. Leave them satisfied and treat them well, showing them love. The function of the church is to give your living testimony of faith and rescue the lives of souls. Have the ambition to win souls and watch over them. Share your eternal inheritances, do not keep heaven only for yourself. I am sad about the ease of my church. I see cowardice and laziness in street evangelism and in homes. The church is paralyzed while the souls are dying. Innovation and reform are needed to improve work on the site. Each one has to improve his attitude towards my work. Each one knows of his duties and obligations as my disciples. God's people, Jesus gave us a responsibility to win souls, regardless of whether he is a pastor or a member. The church has to work together with the same thoughts and one spirit. Do not neglect the work that God has put into your hands. What is of greater value in this world is our souls. Jesus when he was on earth dedicated people and each soul cost the price of divine blood of our Savior. Today I am able to die for those souls who are so valuable, they are worth more than all the gold and the riches of the earth. My ministry is dedicated to the needs of the people, every member of my church has the same thoughts as the growth of the work. Our obligation is not to earn money but to win souls. 
May Jesus, Lord comes to bless every church that hears this testimony. Amen. Grace be with you all that have Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, Amen. Hello everyone thank you for watching our video for today, I trust it blesses your heart. Endeavor to like this video and share it to your loved ones, I pray the grace of the living God will continue to rest upon you and upon everything that pertains to you in the name of Jesus, Amen. If you have any question or comments kindly drop them in the comment section, God bless you. See you in our next video and have a lovely day, bye for now.